Clemens looks in, shakes off the sign. Winfield steps out of the box, steps in. Clemens stretches, delivers, strike two, a slider on the inside corner. Winfield doesn't like the call. Three balls, two strikes, top of the 12th here at Fenway. Sox and Yanks tied 2-2, but the Yankees are threatening. Randolph's on second, Henderson's on first. They'll be running on the pitch. Clemens grabs the roster, pose the rubber, looks in. He stretches, looks, delivers. Ball four, and the sack's up for the Yankees. With are Bradley you blind? Come on, Jesse James, you want to rob people, get a gun. It was right down the pipe. All right, Jimmy, come on, Jimmy, you got it, you got it, kid. Piece of cake, nothing. What happened? One more good shot ought to kill it, Harry. Fifty bucks at six to five, and I'm looking at the blizzard of 88. Where does E.J. keep the tea? Who drinks tea? E.J., the last time I looked. Oh, you mean that stuff that tastes like tangerines? No, I tossed that out. It's in the bottom of the wastebasket if you want to look for it. Jack Stillman, a man for the people. A man for our time. Stillman. Who cares, Pally? Where's the ball game? Now, come on, get lost. Speaking of getting lost, it looks like E.J. went back to Des Moines and left you in charge again. Yeah, no such luck. My niece and her roommate are out pushing doorbells for this guy with the fancy dental work here. The sense of civic responsibility is mind-boggling. When was the last time you voted? I don't know. When was the last Miss Rheingold contest? Fantastic is the only word to describe it. An unbelievable ending to a truly unbelievable ball game. One they'll be talking about for years. Well, there you have it, friends. And now we return you to our regularly scheduled programming. You've got to be kidding. Why don't you run Heidi again? Mrs. Saperstein? Hi. Oh, uh, my name uh, is E.J. Brunson, and I'm calling for uh, Jack Stillman. Uh, Stillman? Uh, Mrs. Uh, Randolph. Dinner, dinner. No, I'm sure I can fit you in. Yes, it's oh, a nice well, table. Um, my oh, name? Kate Hosner. Why, thank you. You have a nice place, too. I can go. We'll, we'll see you tonight. Okay, bye-bye. Well, it sure is something you should think about. Forget it, will you? I'm not going to go after Davidson on his immigration book. But we can nail him with it, Jack. Right, I hired you to sell me as a candidate, not Fine. tell me what I believe Have in. Have a nice day. So, how goes the phone battle? We seem to be winning, Mr. Stone. Now, please make that Jack. This campaign is aging me fast enough already. Your signature, please? Oh, for sure. So, can I expect to see you lovely ladies at the party tonight? Yeah. I'll save a couple of slots on my dance card. Well, good. It's a date, then. Jack! Excuse me, but my brother seems to have another crisis on his hands uh, tonight. I can't believe he just said that. Why not? Aside from the fact that he's married. Oh, EJ, you've got a lot to learn about Jack Stillman. You mean all that stuff you read about in the supermarket throwaways? Oh, come on. You're kidding. I mean, he's just not the kind of man who, uh, huh? is he? I could have made another hundred dollars if you just let me call a few more people, like maybe ten or company. Catherine. Good day, Catherine. I have been trying now for several weeks to locate you. Uh, uh, E.J. E. Brunson. It's my brother, Jacob. E.J. and I share the rent. How do you do? You will come home with me now, Catherine. No, Jacob. You and I. We will run the farm together. No, Kate. I'm gonna grab the first shower. Look, I'm... Nice to meet you, Jacob. Why are you here? What do you really want, Jacob? This place, this city, Catherine, this is not your home. Listen to me. I'm not going back to that farm. I've had enough of it. I'm sorry, Jacob, but just leave me alone. <laughs> Let go of me. Just go away.
I'd say that's better than being three points behind, isn't it? If you win, sir, what about the family business? Oh, that's what we have my brother Mickey for. He's the real brains of the family, always has been. Oh, do I hear a rumba? Come on, boys. Show your mom a good time. Mr. Stillman, are you feeling good about the election? You think you got, a, you got the polls going in your favor? Uh, look, fellas, I promise I'll answer all your questions later, all right? I just spent an hour with Elroy. You know, Elroy Bettelman, Mr. Stillman's financial expert, and he said... <laughs> Listen, EJ, that's neat. Um, I need a favor. Can, can you find someplace else to bunk tonight? You want to evict me? Oh, gee, Kate, I got to study. If you were bringing home Elroy Bettelman, I would move out for you. Why would I bring home Elroy Bettelman? <gasps> oh. Sure, I understand. <laughs> What's wrong with this place? And now, the man of the hour. May I introduce Jack Stillman, the next congressman oh, from this district? No. no questions. You're crazy. EJ, I know what I'm doing, okay? Okay, sure, why not? Guess I can always camp out on Uncle Harry's sofa. We can call it a sofa. Better be important. What? Oh, yeah. Hi, Spinelli. How you doing, guy? What? Do I know how much my tab is? Who do you think you're talking to? A deadbeat? Oh, listen. Uh, cool it, Spinelli. Uh, I got a broad here in the apartment. Look, if you want to bust chops over a few bucks, why don't you call me at the office? All right? Morning. Yeah. Good morning. What are you doing here, kid? Uncle Harry, that that couch. I, I think you ought to donate it to the Salvation Army or something. Where do you think I got it from? So what happened? Uh, your roommate tossed you out or something? Sort of. She brought home company last night. Like, don't ask company. All night company. There's something growing in there. Yeah? I only bought it last Tuesday. Listen, if that's a guy named Spinelli, tell him I died and went to Brockton. Excuse me, I'm looking for a Miss Emma Jean Brunson. I'm Miss Brunson. Would you come with me, please, ma'am? There's been an accident. It's okay. I'll do it. Yeah. Come on, kid. I'm taking you to Gilhooley's. Not now, DeMarco. Hey, is this your niece? I'm glad to meet you. I made DeMarco from a settle. I'm so sorry about the hospital. We're in kind of a hurry. Well, lucky you didn't come home last night, huh? Listen, I heard she was with some guy. Hey, come on, DeMarco. Well, since you didn't come home, maybe she said something. Mentioned a name. Look, Barfag, take a hike or you're going to be eating that tent for breakfast. Come on, kid. Hosser, 22, a volunteer for the campaign of congressional candidate Jack Miss Hosser, who was I don't the want it. Drink it. Okay. You're a mess. Drink it. Patty, let me have a ginger ale. Shut that thing off, will you? Okay, so she was a little crazy. So what? I mean, 
How, how does a fire like that start? She didn't smoke. She didn't play with matches. Harry, she was terrified of fire. Yeah, kid, I know. I know. Listen, this guy she went out with last night, the one she brought home with her, who was it? You think maybe... I don't think anything. I'm just asking. <sighs> this guy's like a disease. Hey, Patty, you really get some swell clientele in here, don't you? Figured I might find you here, McGraw. Now, listen, pal, Mr. we Brunson. Told... The guy your girlfriend brought home, you mind telling me who it was? so why don't you just leave us both alone? Can I use that for a quote? Let's see. Victim's roommate says no comment. Hey, How does that sound? DeMarco. Listen, a man was seen leaving your house after midnight before the fire was reported. He drove away in a four-door gray Jaguar. A neighbor named Delaney made out the plate. It said Jack S. Any idea who that might be? Uh, you've been smoking Chinese flowers. Oh, I guess the cops have, too. They just picked up Jack Stillman and brought him in for questioning. Well, how about it now, little lady? Still no comment? EJ's bawling her eyes out, and I got a mouth full of marbles. I mean, what am I supposed to say? Tough break, kid? Sorry, kid? Not bad for starters, Harry. I mean, it wasn't my idea for my niece to come to Boston and park on my doorstep. But now that she's here, I feel responsible. Kind of like a father. Something like that. Thought boggles the mind. Oh, look, Harry, I'm sorry, really, but E.J. will work it out. Didn't you once tell me that nobody grows up until she's been kicked a few times in the midsection? What about DeMarco? I mean, for three hours, this slime ball was all over me like cheap wallpaper. Now he doesn't even return my call. And did you see anything about the cops picking up Jack Stillman? Because I didn't. What are you saying, Harry? I'm saying that maybe the cops are throwing a couple of coats of paint over this whole thing. A cover-up? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Not ridiculous, ma'am. Uh, Harry, this is Jacob Hostler. Hey, brother. Jacob, my uncle Harry, and Miss McGinnis. Mr. Hostler, I'm very sorry about your sister. Yeah, me too. Yes. Thank you. I think, Mr. McGraw, you're correct about the police. Well, it's just a gut feeling. I don't like the thought that a powerful family is trying to subvert justice. Now, Mr. Hostler, nothing has been proven. You have to forgive me, Mrs. McGinnis. I am the only surviving member of the Hostler family. It is my responsibility to be certain that my sister's death was no more than an act of God. Mr. McGraw, I wish to hire you to investigate this accident. I have $500. I can get more. Whatever is your fee is acceptable. Well, you know, it may just be that, an accident. I'm staying in a hotel nearby. Miss Brunson knows the address. You will call me if you learn something. Excuse me, sir. This is a secured area. My name's McGraw. I'm working on the case. Wait here while I check with Lieutenant Steuben. Steuben? What's homicide doing here? Excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, official business. Uh, Delaney? Mr. Delaney? Anybody here know a guy named Delaney lives around here? Well, don't all shout at once. What I suggest, Arnold, is that we restructure George Semple's various interests into an umbrella corporate with a nonprofit foundation holding the majority of the stock. Mm, this is all very confusing, Stephen. Well, of course it's confusing. Most tax dodges are. But well, with any luck, we'll be defending this one for years. With George footing the bill for our fees. Exactly. George saves a bundle in taxes and gets a nice chunk of the action. Stephen, there is more to practicing law than lining your own pockets. Hello? Eleanor McGinnis. McGinnis, it's me. Yes, Harry, what is it? Yeah, I just came from the kid's house. The arson squad's there. Also, that beer belly Lieutenant Steuben, which means homicide is involved. What about Jack Steuben? Is he involved? Yeah, how do I know? 
Oh, you know that witness, Delaney? All of a sudden this morning, he takes a powder. Wife, kid, dog, and somebody's got him stashed. But who? Why? Don't look at me, Harry. I didn't take him. Now somebody did. Listen, you know that uh, assistant DA, Tyler Chase? Now, he's been sniffing around you for months for a lunch date. Oh, no. Oh, come on, McGinnis. The guy could use a throw. Harry, I am not about to use a social occasion to pump Tyler for information. Hey, we're talking massive cover-up here, and you're worried about Emily Post. I need a Trojan horse. Oh, thank you for the compliment. But the answer is no. Oh, come on, McGinnis. No. Completely, finally, and irrevocably. No. We'll, uh, we'll start with the mushrooms. Stuff with Langostino and basil. And then the sautéed scrod lemon buttered preferred rowel. And a Caesar's salad. Don't forget to mash the anchovies. And perhaps a, a light Chardonnay. Something bright, a wee bit on the dry side. Hmm? I'll skip the mushrooms, Raoul. Bring me a bowl of chowder. Madame? With crackers. Crackers? Certainement. Merci. Really? The chowder is terrible, completely tasteless. Tyler, everything here. You simply must tell me what in the world is going on with Jack Stillman. I wish I could. It's all very confidential right now. Orders from the chief. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were in on it. Oh, well, of course I'm involved. It's all right, Tyler. I understand. No. I have been totally briefed. Really. Of course you have. I'm sorry I even brought it up. Oh. I, I guess it isn't any secret. His car was spotted at the scene. Jack Stillman's car? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Gray Jag, personalized, customized plates. Our boys at the lab matched an imprint of his left rear tire. Good heavens. Mm -hmm. Of course, he denies everything naturally. Naturally? And as for his alibi, his wife claims that he was with her all night long. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Ellie, dear thing. Karen Stillman, Boston's most celebrated inebriate, would swear to anything to protect her husband. As far as details are concerned, she was as fuzzy as a caterpillar. Well, I suppose if the coroner doesn't find anything oh, suspicious... Oh, the coroner, that's a whole other story. We've... Would you excuse me? I'll be back in a jiff. Your chowder, madame, and I brought extra crackers. Thank you, Raoul. I know how difficult that must have been for you. Fantastic, fantastic development. Fantastic. It would appear that we have been chasing the wrong Stillman all along. What? Mm-hmm. Mickey Stillman, the candidate's older brother. Just walked into the chief's office and admitted he was the one with the hospital girl last night. <laughs> Mr. Stillman, can you tell us what you've told the police? Is it true you were with the hospital girl last evening? How Listen, you know? fellas, uh, ladies, what about the fire? I'll tell you what I told the district attorney. Catherine and I had known each other for several weeks, and uh, she invited me up to her home for a late supper. When I left there shortly after midnight, she was alive and well. I no idea how this fire started. In fact, it wasn't until this morning that I learned about this tragic accident. Can you tell us what took you so long to come forward? I'm afraid I slept late. As soon as I realized what had happened, I immediately contacted the chief. Well, a little you early, isn't it, Karen? Nothing for you. Congratulations, darling. Let's hear it for family solidarity. Your brother must be very upset. Either that, or Mama threatened him with a good spanking. I think that's enough, Karen. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I was here last night from the moment we returned from the dance. So you keep telling me. Yeah, I returned early, I might add. Of course, I'm sure, as usual, you were too drunk to remember. You brought me home early, Jackie boy, because you had plans to meet that little chippy. Oh, don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. I lied once to the police. I might as well keep on lying to save your precious 
Political hide. Listen to me. Now, I was here last night. I swear to God, I never left this house. Now, you can't believe that's true. Sure, Jackie. Whatever you say. <laughs> I just hope they never decide to give me a lie detector test. Because for all I know, you could have flown to Rio and back. Now. Honey, listen. Irene, I'll take care of it, I promise. On my lunch hour. Right. I won't eat. Okay, sweetie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Harry, you see what I'm going through? I can't help you, honest. He's breaking your kneecaps again, huh? Geez, Howard, you got the patience of a saint. Oh, it's nothing, Harry. I just gotta pick up these fabric swatches and take them to the paint store. What the hell? I'm telling you what it's like to be married to your ex-wife. Yeah, so, listen, uh, about Mickey Stillman. Oh, come on. You don't think the guy really did it? He's covering for his brother Jack. Ain't that a good idea, okay? See you later. Covering for him, huh? No kidding. Why would anybody think that? Why? Because he wouldn't take a polygraph, Harry. That's why. Does that make sense? If the guy admits he was there, then why won't he take the lie detector? Because he wasn't there. That's why. Yeah, but uh, Jack Stillman's wife gave him an alibi. Uh, what's her name? Karen? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the lady I should talk to. <laughs> Good luck. She just moved into the family compound out in Cambridge. Big fence, big guards, big dogs. Probably wants to avoid reporters. And other pests. Hey, Howard, since when did a few house pets and a little hardware stop me? Oh, by the way, uh, wish Irene a happy birthday for me. I know it's the big one. 34 is the big one? What do you say, pal? McGraw here to see Mrs. Stillman. That's uh, Karen Stillman. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, McGraw. I don't see you listed. You gotta be kidding. Hey, let me see that clipboard. Now, look, I told her this whole thing had to be hush-hush, but uh, I'm working for her, you know? Bye bye, huh? Yeah. I've been kind of keeping my good eye on her old man for the past few weeks. It's not the sort of thing she'd want to let get spread around, especially not to her mother-in-law, if you know what I mean. So I got the uh, photos right here. I'm supposed to deliver them in person. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I, uh, I can't admit you without authorization. Hey, listen, Jug Ears, you want to keep this cushy Please job? Please get out of the driveway, because sir. Because one word from me, and you're going to be back riding shotgun on a pizza truck. Well, I'm going to have a time yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm going to be camped right over there until you get on that horn and tell the lady that I'm waiting to see her. And believe me, I got more patience than you got brains, which I admit probably ain't saying much. <laughs> Uh, see, I, I'm looking for the Granatelli house. You know, you know Granatelli? Little skinny guy wears a, a bad rug. He owns a strip joint on Boylston Street. Oh, come on, guys. Give me a break, will you? My hospitalization just ran out. <laughs> for additional TV time. The results of a quickie poll we conducted this morning. Despite your brother's noble gesture, the voters don't know what to believe. Note the huge jump in undecideds. The masses smell a cover-up. Yeah, well, you know, I never did care too much of this idea of yours, Royce. Me? Having Mickey claim he was with a girl wasn't my idea. I thought it was yours. Are you crazy? It wasn't my idea. I never asked Mickey to stick his neck out on something like this. Hey, wait, wait a minute. It's Davidson. Davidson's behind this whole damn thing. They were the opponent's a little hard-nosed, but he's not stupid. Yeah, well, I'm not stupid either, all right? Hey, 
What do you know about a private investigator named Harry McGraw? Nothing. Should I? He came out to the compound today to see your wife. What for? Claims he's working for her. She says otherwise. She's a liability, Jack. Now more than ever. Hey, Karen's my problem. I'll take care of her. Correction, Mr. Candidate. She's our problem. Talking police brutality, Sonny. Pure and simple. They weren't even police, Harry. They were security guards protecting private property. You were trespassing. You're a tax lawyer. What do you know? McGraw. Mr. McGraw? This is Jacob Hostler. Oh, yeah. How you doing? I am concerned, Mr. McGraw, about what I see on the news broadcast. That this Mr. Jack Stillman, this murderer, is being protected by the police. Well, now, we don't know that for sure. I come from a small community, Mr. McGraw, where we deal with problems personally. We do not rely on the police to dispense justice. Hey, listen, pal, if you're saying what I think you're saying... I am saying that I expect from you the truth. And that one way or another, my sister's death will be avenged. That's what I need. A wacko client playing I the jury. You may not be the only wacko, Harry. You're going off half-cocked, dragging Aunt Eleanor and the firm into a wild goose chase. For all you know, it's just an accident. A plain, simple accident, OK? I'm afraid not. I just got off the phone with Tyler. The arson investigators say the fire was deliberately set. They also have the autopsy report. The cause of death was a severe blow to the head. It was murder. The candidate's older brother, Michael Mickey Stillman, yesterday admitted that it was he, not his brother, who had kept a rendezvous with campaign worker Catherine Hustler. But did he? And now that the coroner has revealed that foul play was involved, we have to wonder whether Mickey might not be wise to reconsider his admission. After all, commitment to family. <laughs> Better give her another shot, Doc. I don't want another scene. Mr. Fielding, we picked up company. It's that private detective. Lose him. You can run, Bozo, but you can't hide. Now listen up, Seymour. I, I am being very calm. I am not putting out 200 clams for a new radiator. Seymour, I am seriously beginning to question the validity of your parentage. No, no, see, you get a can of this stuff. It costs about five bucks tops. You pour it in the radiator. Shazam, no more leaks. I don't care if you've already done it 10 times. Do it again. Five bucks, Seymour. That's all I go. Five. That's because you've considered buying a new car. What do you mean? That is a new car, practically. McGinnis, I had her right here. Right here. Karen Stillman. They were trying to sneak her away someplace. Probably figured she was getting ready to blab. Now, all I need is five minutes with that dame, and now they got her Why stabbed. Why don't you ask Augusta Stillman? Oh, the Mother Superior? Oh, sure, sure. And while we're chatting, maybe the Pope can serve us tea. You see this? You see this, McGinnis? Is that new, Harry? I lose track. This is a present from one of Stillman's hired gorillas. If they ever run out of bananas in Africa, those guys are going to well, starve to death. Well, you don't want to talk with her. McGinnis, you don't hear so good. Fort Stillman is closed until further notice. We're expected at 8.30, sharp. And Harry, try to find a tie that doesn't have last week's breakfast on it. I told you it was her idea, not mine. And one thing she made very clear, bring along Harry McGraw. Yeah, wonder why. Maybe she wants to confess. Yeah, she's probably heard about the way I operate. She wants to try to soften me up. The old lady's a hardball player, McGinnis. But this time, she's dealing with a golden glove. Good evening, Mrs. McGinnis. I'm expected. 
Oh, yes, Mrs. McGinnis. Hiya, pal. Nice seeing you again. One thing I can't stand is a sore head. Come on, McGinnis. This ain't the Queen of England. Eleanor. Augusta. How lovely of you to come. Sweet of you to ask me. <laughs> oh, and of course, this is Mr. McGraw. Delighted. Oh, yeah. Same here. Shall we go in the other room? Wonderful. I feel terrible we've lost touch. You know, her late husband was so much more than just our family attorney. My Jeremy admired him deeply. The feeling was mutual, I assure you. Sit down. Well, you're hungry, aren't you? I'll have something prepared for you. Yeah, well, I did miss supper. Oh. But actually, uh, that's okay, because um, I'm on a diet. Oh. <laughs> you were by earlier today to see my daughter-in-law. Yeah. I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask. Unfortunately, that, that won't be possible. She's under a doctor's care in a sanitarium. On oh, ice, huh? Oh, no, you were right. Your, your friend is a plain-spoken man. Perhaps I can help you with some of those questions. Oh, sure. If you can tell me where your son Jack was the night Kate Hostler got herself yanked out of the ball game. Harry. Jack's whereabouts are immaterial. My son Michael has told the police... Excuse me, ma'am, but Michael's story is right out of Grimm's fairy tales. The kid who's on the hot seat is your son Jack. You know it, and I know it. And in spite of the arm lock you've been putting on the cops and the press and the neighbors, all of Boston knows it. You're not only ill-mannered, you're mistaken. Mrs. Stillman, I know a snow job when I see one. And right now, City Hall looks like an ice palace, and you're the one who's pushing all the buttons. If so, it shouldn't be difficult to find one with your name on it. Well, what's that, a threat? If not, I have failed to make myself clear. Now, just a moment, Augusta. This isn't your concern. Oh, that's where you're very wrong. Even if you were able to stifle a criminal indictment, which I seriously doubt, you and your son are still staring down the throat of a wrongful death suit. You tell her, Counselor. Which, under the circumstances, I would be delighted to pursue on behalf of Harry's client. Sorry you have to leave so suddenly. Because it was much too short. Mother. Michael. What are you doing here? They released me. In fact, they're not even going to file charges. Lack of evidence, they said. Darling, you go up to your room and I'll be up in a few moments. Look, I'm sorry. I did the best I could. Now, Michael. How do you like that broad? Not as much as I used to. But that old battle axe cheats at solitaire. Harry, Augusta's behavior is inexcusable. But I still cannot believe that Jack Stillman is involved with murder. Yeah? Who told you that? Paul Harvey? I am an excellent judge of character, and I have known that young man since he was younger. Well, maybe. I'm saying maybe the guy got himself set up. All right. Now, if not Jack, then who? It's only seven days till the primary. You tell me. Oh, be serious. You're not suggesting someone would commit murder just to win an election. In Boston? Listen, I'd ask you up for coffee, but my percolator's on the fritz. Some other time, Harry, when your percolator's in working order. Good night, Harry. Warning from Jack Stillman, Gumshoe. Keep your nose out of things that don't concern you.
Sorry. I know, I know. I look terrible. A couple of hoods working for Jack Stillman broke into the apartment last night. What? Jack Stillman. I still can't believe it. I don't believe it either. First rule of a cover-up, don't advertise. And these guys were advertising. Trying to make you think they were Jack Stillman's men. Right. Now, yesterday, old lady Stillman, uh, she said Matt used to be her husband's lawyer, right? One time, oh, yes. Oh, a few years back. It was in all the scandal sheets. I mean, not that I actually read them. But I remember Jack's wife was hospitalized in some sanitarium. Right. Now, maybe it was the same one that they carted her off to yesterday. Could be something in your files. Well, there is. They'd be in the storeroom. Mr. Hosler? Yes. Ed DeMarco from the Sentinel. Uh, so sorry about your sister. Yes, thank you, but... Uh, I... Listen, uh, I'm working on a feature for tomorrow's edition. I'd kind of like to get your reaction to the cover-up. Cover-up? What are you talking about? They've arrested the man that killed Catherine. Michael Stillman. Haven't you heard they let him go? That's not possible. Hey, pal, we're talking Stillman influence here. Anyway, everybody knows it wasn't Mickey that was with your sister. It was his brother, Jack. Mickey was just lying to protect him. And the police, they know of this. Sure, but no one isn't doing something about it. That's two different things. Now, can I get a couple I'm of quotes here like that? How do you feel? No can I come in for a no, minute? Excuse me. Hey, wait a minute, buddy. All I want is a story. This is ridiculous. Some of this stuff goes back 20 years. Just keep looking for medical files, doctor's reports. Aha. Here's something. Dr. Thor Peterson. Peterson? I heard of him. He's a big-time shrink. He runs the Collingwood Clinic in Framingham. Yowza, yowza, Karen Stillman, there it is. Three and a half months alcohol dependency. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. What is it? Karen wasn't the only Stillman the doc was treating. Excuse me. I wonder, could you tell me where I could find Mr. Jack Stillman? I'm sorry, he's not here right now. He's out making campaign speeches. I wonder, please, might you direct me? Look, Harry, nobody wants to believe Jack's innocent more than I do, but... But, I... no buts about it, kid. It's all right there in the report. Sixteen years ago, Mickey almost kills his brother Jack in a hiking accident. Only according to Dr. Peterson, it was no accident. Mickey tried to put Jack away for the deep six, something to do with Cain and Abel. Actually, Oedipus complex. Mother loved to pry them. You see, when the yeah, child Yeah, yeah, junk like that. So while Mickey's busting his hump trying to run the family business, Mama's drooling over little brother Jack, whose sweat has no aroma, if you get my drift. Forget it, Harry. So the old man, the senator, ups and dies, and Mama decides to coronate Jack. While Mickey's standing around with his thumb in his nose, wondering who elected his little brother crown prince. Now, this kind of rejection can make one a little testy, especially a mental case like Mickey. So it was Mickey all the time. He was the one who took Kate home that night. And made everybody think it was his brother. Come on, McGinnis, think. With the girl's death hanging over him, Jack couldn't get elected game warden in a one-moose town. Meanwhile, good old brother Mickey decides to take the heat, knowing the gas is turned off. And this not only diverts suspicion, it also shows the old lady, oh, look, Mama, what a good boy am I, while permanently putting Prince Jack in the royal toilet. You know, my opponent is fond of talking about unemployment. However, to him, unemployment means the other guy out of work. I want to talk about security, hey, Gil, your security. Careful, you're playing with fire here. Yeah. Security means your job, Don't your you know paycheck, your medical you? benefits. <laughs> any more than you do. I wasn't there. Oh, hey, stop it. Oh, you have to admit the truth. Uh, yeah. Truth. How come the cops don't have you in jail, buddy? We all know what happened. Yeah. No, you're wrong. You're all wrong. Oh. Please. Hostler. Terrific. On the tragic and unfortunate event of Miss Hostler's untimely death. However, I have faith Continuing investigation to reveal all the facts. And, and more importantly, more importantly, I have faith that you will follow your conscience and allow justice to be served. I want to talk about security.
Relax, will you, McGinnis? As my mother used to say, a watched phone never rings. The watched pot, Harry. Whatever. Anyway, Mickey Stillman's dead meat. Did you see the look his old lady gave him? I just hope they don't throw the book at that hostler kid. Poor guy, I feel sorry for him. Well, I think I can work something out with Tyler. Not necessary, Eleanor. An hour ago, we sent Mr. Hostler back to his farm. A stern warning to stay there. Hey, Tyler, you're not such a bad guy after all. Thanks, McGraw. You don't know how much I wish I could return the compliment. Tyler, what about Mickey Stillman? No, oh, complete breakdown. Confess to everything. Augustus Stillman is with the chief, pressuring him right now for indefinite confinement in a mental institution, which, under the circumstances, is probably the most we can hope for. Well, now that that is over, I would be delighted to take you for a intimate little supper somewhere. Well, the fact is, Tyler, I already have a date. Right, Harry? Yeah, with who? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Jeez. Yeah, see, the thing is, Tyler, old pal, uh, me and McGinnis are going to go over to Gil Hooley's for some beer and pizza. Hey, if you want to come along, be my guest. Beer and pizza? Thanks for the generous invitation, McGraw, but no thanks. Good night, Eleanor. Good night, Tyler. You owe me one. Owe you? For what? I just saved you from a case of indigestion. Which I'm not going to get from Gil Hooley's? Not to mention what he had in mind for after dessert. Harry, that won't be a problem for you, will it? Or did you get your percolator fixed? Come on, big guy, I'm going to take you to someplace respectable, where the napkins do not come out of a plastic dispenser. Oh, McGinnis. And if you're on your very best behavior, I might even buy. Why didn't you say so? Now, I know a little place in Brock. They make the greatest seafood salad. They got everything in it. Conk, squid, octopus. They even have live eels and tanks. Yeah, and the lobsters, they're so big they have to put a leash on them.